All right, so here's something a little bit fun. Um, I said when I got this 332 that uh, I was going to use it or attempt to use it to blow snow with the 47 blower. So what I did is I went out to the other building and I got my old uh, 318 quick hitch here. And uh, then I have all of the parts for the quick hitch except the shield sitting there on the floor. And I figured now would be a great time for us to install that on this machine. Now the first thing we need to do is we gotta get the quick hitch back off because I wanna gap the PTO and everything. And this thing was a royal pain to get on. Um, I'm not really sure why it was. Um, it just did not. It did not want to go on this machine. It came off a lot easier than it went on. So we're going to uh, get this set up. Um, so you give me a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and gap the PTO and everything, stuff like that. Give it a once over. Uh, and then we will uh, proceed with assembling the quick hitch. All right, so got the uh, PTO clutch um, regapped. <clears throat> uh, the the bottom two, or I would say there's one on that side, one down here, and then one right up kind of on this side. Um, the upper one was extremely, extremely tight, and that's probably some of that uh, uh, just grinding sound that I talked about. I think I talked about it in the first video. I said I thought it was the bearing, but it may be the PTO clutch, and it was definitely the clutch. It was just kind of those plates were rubbing against each other, uh, which is not a good thing to have. Most likely, um, you know, couldn't get it engaged or something, so somebody just tightened it up, which that happens. Um, you know, or it could have just tightened up over time. Doesn't normally happen that way, but that can happen. So, uh, and then for some reason it wouldn't crank. Uh, I, do, I don't know if the time lapse caught that, but I struggled a little bit. Um, and what I had to do is I had to cycle the PTO to get it to crank. So that tells me that might be a couple of little electrical gremlins uh, on it. But if you go back and watch the first video, um, we definitely have some gremlins somewhere uh, based on the, uh, based on the wiring on this side of the engine. So I'm going to go ahead and put the panels back on. We'll talk a little bit while I do that. So this video is not going to have any snow removal in it. In fact, I probably won't even get the uh, I probably won't even get the blower hooked up to it because currently the blower is on the X758 and um, basically I will, there's no snow in the forecast, there's no snow to move and I'll be gone for a few days and so I don't want to leave this for my wife to have to move snow with. I would much prefer her to move snow with the X758 if she needs to. There's not even any snow in the forecast so I'm not too worried about it. I was thoroughly impressed at the beginning of this video. The startup of this thing, um, the cold start was actually really impressive. Um, this is the first time I had run it since I parked it back there right after I got it. So three weeks ago, four weeks ago, did I get it a month ago? I'm not really sure. I know I got it before Thanksgiving, so I guess over a month ago it's been sitting back there. And uh, started right up. Didn't even didn't even smoke all that much. I'm kind of shocked. Um, particularly with the fact that, you know, right now outside, I, well, currently it is 10 degrees. Now, obviously, it's not 10 degrees in the back of the shop, but it's probably in the mid 20s. Uh, but it was pretty cold back there the other night. In fact, this thing just popped right off with a couple cycles of glow plugs. Really makes me happy. So, side panels are back on. First thing we need to do is attach <clears throat> this pulley, which I bought this pulley recently. Uh, it's a CNC copy. Um, actually, I want to go get something. 
So this is a CNC copy of the actual pulley um, that came with this kit. And something you could do, several years ago I had a bunch of these Haben pulleys made. And I would say that diameter wise, you know, these Haven pulleys might even work. Um, if anything, they're going to be larger, they're going to spin it a little faster, which is good. Um, but, so this is a little smaller diameter. I don't know, actually know what the diameter is, but, um, guy that I bought it from, it's 200 bucks and, uh, price of metal nowadays, I believe it with the CNC machine stuff and hopefully he made a little money on it. So, uh, um, but I'm going to put this on there and I'm going to put it on the PTO. I'll put, I'll put the camera down there, uh, but I just wanted to show you the difference between these two, the Haven pulley and then the uh, five or the uh, quick attach pulley. All right, so found my hardware that I need. I'm gonna go ahead and actually chase all of these threads with a tap <clears throat> because they've been sitting on the front of this machine for you know the last 30 years and collecting debris and whatnot. And we're just gonna go ahead and clean them up. You want pretty short bolts to do this. I've already done that one there. <clears throat> there we go. I mean, they they feel kind of dirty because um, they're definitely the tap is a little tight, but it's not too bad. I think one of the biggest problems with these kits is the fact that, you know, people bought, have bought these 47 blowers off of these 318s and the the PTO pulley stays on the machine and then machine gets sold or whatnot and so it always seems like the pulleys are missing which the pulley was missing out of the kit when I bought it um, I bought this kit several years ago, many years ago now um, probably gosh I did a video on it um, probably three or four years ago or more so let's make sure bolts fit they do so let me go get our pulley and a wrench all right so i am going to put washers on here i'm not going to put lock washers um i'm making that executive decision uh, based strictly on the fact that I'm not sure how the lock washers would handle uh, the aluminum and so I'm going to try these first and what I'll do is I'll inspect it after you know 15 minutes or so of run time and you saw how this just fit over there. Um, it's really important if you have somebody make a pulley, make sure the recesses are there. Uh, if not, this pulley will never fit on the front with the grill on. And it will stick out too far. <clears throat> now getting these things tight is going to be real interesting. Because basically I'm going to have to turn this pulley every time. And keep the... Uh, keep the pulley stable or from spinning. All right. Now, I think I'm just going to have to come at it from the underside. Get them as tight as I can. Hopefully. Nope. I 
And the thing about it is, is it's just off enough that uh, it would be really difficult to get a uh, socket on there. Now what's going on here? There you go. There's one. All right, so I'm sitting here. I've got this bar. There's not very many pictures on online, good pictures at least. Um, that show how to attach this bar. So there's these holes right here on the side of the hitch. I think that goes through. And then this pin right here latches in to that. And then the bolts Something along those lines. Hmm. Um, that's what we're going to run with for a minute. And we're going to see if it's wrong. The problem is I don't have a belt. And here is the pulley. And it um, looks like the pulley kind of rests in there, like that. And then this tensions the pulley. So it's like that and comes down pull down on it. At least that's and it holds it in place. At least that's my the premise that I'm going to operate under. I think. So let's go ahead and get this one on this side. Doing too well over here. There we go. Now, got that coming through along those lines. And then we've got this washer, and we need a carter. Uh, split ring or split key. Let me go find one of those. All right, I'm gonna use this. Let's see if I can get it back through again. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I think that's how it works. So basically, this is free, comes to the front, and then once you've installed it on the tractor, you put your PTO on there, and then this locks that into place. Yeah, and then basically you can dictate how much tension you want by loosening or tightening these bolts right here. 
At least that's what I think is supposed to happen. Now, like I said, we're just gonna act like it's a new belt and lift that all the way up. So now we put it on there and then this latch is in place just like that. And then it will hold the front of this in there, the back of it, this part right here attaches to where the mule drive goes. So unfortunately for some of you, it will not, you can't put the blower and the deck on at the same time. Um, Hopefully some of you are laughing about that comment. Um, yeah, I think that'll work. All right, let's uh, get this hitch on the tractor. All right, let me remove my highly technical uh, covers. And let's get this thing on the tractor. Good grief. Now you can watch me struggle. It is like almost too narrow for the tractor. There we go. I don't know why this is such a pain, but it is. I have the same problem. It could just be the hitch, because I have the same problem with this hitch. A couple times that I've used it on my 318. It's just super tight in the frame. So now, I think, there we go. And we're locked in. Whew. I'm gonna start sweating before too long. everything on the floor. All right. Now the painful part, from what I remember, getting these uh, stupid things in. One. Two. I have no idea if the order I'm going in is correct or not. Three. Four. 
All right, sweet. Now, let's see if we can mount this in there without causing too many issues. All right, got that in there. Is some kind of a tight fit. Glad somebody else designed this, not me. Okay. Okay, so line that up. Oops. Well, that's not work. Smash my damn finger. That hurts. Okay, so we've got a couple different problems going on here. None of them are necessarily simple to solve. Lots of clearance issue problems. So to put this on, this shaft has to be above the PTO shaft before you even get started. Now that that's on there. Okay. Now, oh, ooh. I think you have to have the belt on to get this thing to work. Because if you don't have a belt, there's no upward tension, and so there's nothing to get it to just hang there. So you have to have the belt on to get this assembly to stick in there, which makes sense now that I'm working on it. The problem is, I have to figure out a belt. Um, hopefully I can find the length of the belt on deer parts. But I think, based on that, I can't go any farther until I get a belt. So, and the chances of me getting a belt in the next couple days are slim to none, so this will probably be a project that we have to complete after the first of the year because I'm not gonna do much around here over Christmas. So, yeah. Anyway, that's where we're at on this. We'll come back to it once I figure out a belt length or find a belt, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I suppose we could start it up before I put it away. And um, with the 47 blower on this thing, it is going to be ginormously long. Um, it is going to be way long. So I think what I'm going to do for right now is put it back in its little hole in the back and um, call it a night. So got questions, comments, leave them below. Hopefully this explains a little bit more about the quick hitch and how it mounts. And um, who knows, I may find a instruction sheet and I'm all wrong with how I put it, put it together, but we'll find out.